Ready for new lab? So this is a new lab, part of our STM32H5 MOOC. In this lab, we will use the DMA, so direct memory access, with a peripheral, so the USART in this case. We will transmit data using USART with DMA. So this is a basic DMA lab, and we will have another more advanced one later on. So this lab requires that you have completed the two previous labs. The objectives of these labs are the following. First, understand how to configure basic DMA transfer for peripheral. Number two, add user code to generate a DMA transfer. Then, as an example, so in this lab, we are going to use the USART DMA API to transmit data to a terminal. And then we look at you know, the callback functions that we can use. In this case, we will toggle a green LED when the USART transfer is complete. So we're going to reuse our previous project under stm 32 QID, so the one from uh, lab two. And basically we're going to add some configuration. In this case, for the user three, we are going to add a DMA setting. So there is a tab right here in the peripheral, DMA settings. And we're also going to enable the interrupts for user three. And then once this is done, we're going to go you know, to the DMA settings and then go to GPDMA one. Okay, so from our previous project, from the previous lab, we're going to, uh, so if it's not open, uh, open your project, your previous project. And now we're going to open, you know, the IOC file. In the IOC file here, what we're going to do is go to user three. And first of all, we're going to go to the NVIC settings to enable the user three interrupt. Second, now in the DMA settings, we're going to jump to the GPDMA one. In the GPDMA configuration, we are going to, first of all, select channel zero as a standard request mode. Then we will click on all channel right here, the tab right here. So as you can see, once you select all channel, and we're going to rename the request for channel zero and give a name like DMA underscore request underscore user three underscore TX. Next step is to click on the CH zero, so channel zero, and we're going to uh, do the following configuration. So we're going to select, you know, the circular configuration, but in this case, we disable it. We are going to select the request configuration. We are going to select the channel configuration. We are going also to select or configure the source data setting and the destination data setting. The data handling, the trigger, and the different event configuration. All right, so those are the GPDMA one, you know, more than the configuration. Look for the channel zero. So that's the first one. And we're going to select the standard request mode. So the linked list mode will have another lab, you know, later on. So this is something, but first we'll start, you know, by easy uh, DMA. So using the standard request mode. In the old channel tab, we're going to change the name of this request. So remember, as we said, DMA request underscore user underscore TX. Now click on CH0. So we're going to configure the channel zero. The circular mode is disabled. So we'll keep it disabled. For the request, so the configuration, instead of software, select user three TX. We'll keep the rest of the configuration for request configuration. For the channel configuration, we will keep the priority low. So anyway, there is only one channel, so it doesn't make sense to change it. But if you add multiple you know, channel configured, this is where you can set up the priority of your channel. Transaction mode will be normal. 
And for the direction, so this is actually not correct. So it's not peripheral to memory, but it's actually memory to peripheral because we're going to transmit data. So we'll move data from a buffer, so from RAM, and to the data register of the peripheral. For the source data setting, so let's see what we have here. So first, source address increment after transfer. So this is the memory, so yes. So basically, we want to do that, so that we move, you know, like data from one to another. So we have to increment, you know, uh, basically the pointer to the table that we want to send. The data width will be a byte. Burst length is one. And for the port selection, we'll use the port zero. For the destination data setting, so no need to increment, you know, the destination address because, you know, this is the data register of your peripheral, so it doesn't change address. So disable it. Then the data width is the same, so byte. So we want to make sure that we have the same, you know, like a data width. So we'll keep it as a byte. And we'll keep the rest of the configuration, burst length, and for the ports, we'll change to port one. The rest of the configuration, data handling, trigger, and transfer event configuration will remain the same. So no need to change, keep it by default. This concludes the configuration of the GPDMA1. Now we can generate the code. So remember this little icon in order to generate the code. Same thing, yes. This is the code we're going to be adding. So the code to be added, same as before, can be found into the description of this video. Number one, we'll add the include for string.h. Number two, we'll add our buffer. So this is the buffer that will contain the message to be sent. Number three, we're going to change the callback function for the EXTI. So in here, what we're going to do is comment the two first function call that we made previously, and we're going to add a new one. So we're going to add this API from our HAL library. So HAL underscore UART underscore transmit underscore DMA. So this is the API in order to transmit data using DMA for the UART. As parameters, we'll give the address of the UART3 handler. Then we'll give the source of the data that we want to send. So this is my buffer. And then the last part is the length. So using these functions, we're going to find the length of my buffer. So in order to send the complete string of data. Last point is to add a transfer complete callback function. In this function, what we're going to do is so when all the transfer has been complete, then we're going to toggle the LED, so PB0. And that will be the last code to be added. The rest of the code, the previous you know, code, does not require any change. In main.c, scroll all the way up and then add include string.h. Now we're going to add the buffer that we want to send, so the buffer containing the message we want to send. At this point, we can modify the callback function that we added previously. So scroll down, that's the one. We're going to comment the previous calls and add the API you know, to transmit data using DMA for UART. Now we can add our UART transfer complete function so once the DMA transfer has been completed, what we're going to do is toggle the LED. We finished adding code. Now build your project.
we are ready to test our code on the nuclear board. So to do that, so if you had you know, the nuclear board connected previously, please unconnect it and reconnect it. So this is to properly disconnect the previous console in CubeID. Now enter debug. Switch context. Execute the code. So resume on this icon. Now we need to open the console. So remember this icon right there. Command console. And then we're going to do a serial port. Select the serial, you know, like port that we uh, previously created and press OK. Now we are connected and let's test our code. So if I press on the user button on my nuclear board, you see that I'm seeing the message. So this has been sent, you know, like all this data has been sent with DMA. And also I can see that my LED, my green LED, is toggling at every transfer. So every time I press, I see it toggling. So it works perfectly fine. Excellent. So we can now stop the execution and we are pretty much done with this lab.